by 5 News starts now with live team coverage from the Murdoch murder trial. It's the fifth day of the Alec Murdoch double murder trial in Colleton County. The former Lowcountry attorney is accused of killing his wife Maggie and son Paul in the summer of 2021. This is video of Alec walking into court this morning as today marks the second day of testimony in the murder trial. Now we want to go to Raphael James who is live at Colleton County Courthouse as the prosecution is calling more witnesses to the stand. Now. Roth, yesterday uh, the jurors, they got to see some graphic video from the body cameras of the first deputy on scene there, but uh, the rest of the courtroom, they weren't allowed to see those images. Can you tell us uh, a little bit about why that might be? Yeah, Nick, initially we were told it was out of respect for the family that they shielded those images from the rest of the courtroom. But after talking with media law expert Jay Bender this morning, I understand that perhaps a truer statement is technological limitations of the building. If you see behind me, it says that this courthouse, the Colleton County Courthouse, was established in 1822. It wasn't designed with television in mind back then, and it still struggles with the task. Even even today inside of the courtroom pool photographers and the way the courtroom is set up um, we're told that it would be difficult to bring in a screen or monitor and set it up in a way that everyone could see it anyway and not be a safety or fire hazard blocking aisles or exits there are monitors set up near the jury box but those can't be seen from the gallery furthermore the building is an historic one which means radical updates like drilling holes in the walls may not be permitted so for now the court is having to come up with workarounds pool photographers there are allowed to take photos of select parts of video presentations like these you see here showing Alec Murdoch the night of the murders. Take a notice of the shirt that he's wearing. It's white and clean and the weapon that Murdoch said he went to the house to get because he didn't feel safe. It also shows the shoes that Maggie Murdoch was wearing. Now the attorneys have all agreed to release redacted versions of all body camera videos and they're going to give those to us as soon as those edits are complete. Now in the courtroom today the prosecution from the state called an investigator for Collin County and they played the interview of that interrogation from that night with Alec Murdoch. She told the state that Alec Murdoch went to his son after arriving on the scene checked him for a pulse and then she said he turned him over. He was lying face down in a pool of blood. He turned him over and that's when she says Alec Murdoch told her that Paul's cell phone fell out of his pocket. Well, that prompted the state to ask a series of follow-up questions. Uh, Paul was lying face down, as we mentioned. Were there any footprints around the body? Were there any places where someone maybe had knelt down in the blood. She responded, no. They asked, were there any visible signs of blood on Alec Murdoch's hands, shoes, knees, forearms, anywhere? And she again responded in the negative that there were none. The defense is now questioning that investigator in the courtroom, and we'll have more for you coming up on Live 5 News at 4. From the Collin County Courthouse, I'm Raphael James. Back to you. All right, thanks, Rob, and make sure you stick with us throughout the day. Our team coverage, it'll continue at four. You can also find us online and streaming on platforms, including Roku, Fire TV, and Apple TV. Now, we won't have our regular shows at five and six, but we will carry special Murdoch coverage during those times online. You can also follow the live blog all day long on live5news.com.